God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. We must understand that wicked angels are not simply destructive. All right? In other words, they're not just trying to tear down the kingdom of God's beloved Son. Satan is also building his own kingdom. He is the motivating influence behind the great Babylonian system, an economic and political and religious system that is in opposition to God. So when we read of the Lord Jesus speaking about the kingdom, he says in the second parable of the kingdom, Matthew 13, that the Lord goes out and he sows good seed. And here the seed is not the word of God. The seed is people, the people of God, the children of God. And they're sown. And right behind him during the night comes the enemy and he sows seed. And there the seed are the children of the wicked one. So, for example, if the Lord plants you in a factory or in a school or in a neighborhood, you can be sure the enemy will come right behind and he will plant people who will be there, who will be a thorn in your side, people who will try to choke out the influence of your life there. They will complain to the boss. They will start arguments with you at lunchtime. They'll uh, make snide remarks about you. You know it's going to happen. I mean, it's right there in the book. So don't be shocked when it happens. There are people like that in your neighborhood. You know the people on the job. And as soon as you seek to do something for God and bear fruit for God, along comes the enemy. Now, we are living in a generation where we are being encouraged as Christians to try and tear out the tares. Is that right? And it seems at first a good idea. Let's get in there in this political system and in the school board and in the neighborhood and let's pull out the tares. Oh, said the Lord, wait a minute. If you pull out the tares, you may do a lot of damage to the wheat. And that's exactly what's happening. There's a lot of damage being done to the wheat. So that's not our job, you see. He said, leave it to the end. I have my angels, and when the time comes, I will send my holy angels, and they will bring the wheat into the barn, and they will take the tares, and they will burn them. It's all looked after. It's a tremendous encouragement to read Matthew 13. Because the first four parables that we read are full of sabotage and subterfuge, and we get the idea that things are really in trouble. Uh, the seed is being stolen and being choked out by the tares, and the leaven is being sneaked into the meal, and there's this great monstrosity of a tree with every foul kind of bird in its branches, and it really looks bad, doesn't it? Well, that's the view that the multitude gets. But then the Lord sends the multitude away and he brings his disciples into the house and he shuts the door and then he says, as, as it were, let me tell you what it's really like. And he tells them about this beautiful pearl and this wonderful treasure and the sorting out at the end of the dragnet, the good and the bad sorted out, God is going to sort it all out at the end. The king is saying, I've got everything in control, I'm right on schedule, I know what I'm doing, don't get frantic. And we can rest in that. The king is going to triumph. 